Well, guess who came to the rescue? You know him as Joseph. So we Hebrews did not cause any famine. We rescued them from one. Now let's go to Genesis 47 verse 13. Please feel free to read from any translation you like. And it says here that, uh, let's see which translation we're going to look at. New Living Translation. I'll just pick this one randomly. Meanwhile, the famine became so severe that all the food was used up and people were starving throughout the lands of Egypt and Canaan. Now, let me explain something to you. This is a busted up, busted up translation. That is not what the verse says at all. The next one, the English Standard Version reads, Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe. So the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of the famine. That's not the correct translation. Um, Now it actually gives the identity of the individuals who were responsible uh, for the famine. It gives a lot of details. That expression is from a very derogatory term that's used in ancient Hebrew to describe these individuals who gave them that junk seed. Of course, in the text, in ancient Hebrew, they are called Hatarad. Hatarad. Now, if you don't speak our language, um, then obviously the expression Hatarad won't make any sense to you. So we're going to go somewhere. and I'm, sh- I'm going to show you in here this word that is abbreviated in the anglicized version of our writings or translations and you are very familiar with this term so just as i showed you the example in the other video i posted about heathen we're going to show you how words taken from my language are used by foreigners but they sometimes they change the pronunciation or they shorten it so let's go to the new testament we are going to go to matthew 13 verse 25. I know I would say 99% of you, 99.9% are very familiar with this verse. Let's read there. I'm going to read from, let's see, King James. Let's, Let's read from the King James Version. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And what is a tear? A lot of people would define a tear as false wheat, right? It looks like the real thing, but it really isn't. So this expression, hatarad, that's where the word tear comes from. And so when you read it in ancient Hebrew, this is the derogatory term that you see used in the verse at Genesis 47. And that's the expression that's used to describe this particular tribe of Arabs, Arabs. And also describes the seed that they gave to the Pharaoh. Of course, like I said, I suspect they knew they weren't going to get a harvest from it. So it reads to me like a, a classic case of attempted genocide. That's what it sounds like. You knowingly give these people tear seed, tedre seed. You give them tedre seed on purpose because if they developed it, as it says in the text, they developed this strain, that's what I call it. You already knew it was not going to give a yield. Now, as you read on in Genesis 47, in ancient Hebrew, it basically goes into a little bit more detail about the variant, the seed variant, and the fact that they changed it at the genetic level. And it even tells specifically what they changed, okay? Because it uses a Hebrew term in here. Um, And that word that they use is lul, lul. So remember in one of my videos, Uh, we were talking about the commandments and I talked about a term that we use when referring to babies and we used the expression lul. Now amongst my people we have informal ways of speaking. Uh, I should say my great grandmothers, great uncles, great grandfathers and all of them when they were alive. So in our language we have informal ways of speaking. You know we have formal ways as well. So when you read in the text you're going to see the formal 
written word. So you will see the full term lul. However, when we use it, we don't use the full expression lul. We use le. We shorten it. Yeah, I know it sounds like French. Uh, but hey, you know, linguists say all language comes from our tongue. So we use a shortened expression, le. And I'll give you an example. Um, amongst our people, if a son is named after his father, you know, in English, they would call that son a junior, right? Well, so the word junior does not exist in Hebrew. It's not a Hebrew word. Our version is to use, to preface the son's name with lul. However, we use the informal l. Okay, so let's say if a son is named after his father and his father's name is Micah, Micah Jacob, right? Or something like that. So we would, we would literally preface his name with l Micah, l Micah, l Micah. That's how we would say it using the informal. So that's literally how we would say junior in ancient Hebrew. Lamaika. 